Hi everyone! Today I thought we could spend some time talking about the differences between pemphigus and pemphigoid and how you might be able to tell the two apart. But before we get there, let's take a step back and talk about what they are together. So pemphigus and pemphigoid are both autoimmune blistering diseases. What that means is that the patient's immune system is creating antibodies like it normally does to fight infection, to fight invaders of the body, but instead this time it's made a mistake and it's actually attacking proteins or antigens that are found in the patient's own body. The difference between pemphigus and pemphigoid really has to do with where the proteins are that those antibodies are attacking. So to, in order to better explain, we should probably talk a little bit about what normal skin looks like. So as you probably remember, normal skin is made up of three main layers. The top layer is called the epidermis, the next layer is called the dermis, and below that is the subcutis or the subcuticular fat, the fat layer. We're gonna focus in on the very top layer and maybe the very top of the second layer, the epidermis and just the dermis. In the epidermis, all of your skin cells, your keratinocytes, are being held together by a variety of proteins. And one of those proteins is called the desmosome. The desmosome is actually a pretty complicated group of smaller proteins that are all linking together. So imagine all your skin cells are just holding hands and being held together that way. At the bottom of your epidermis, the epidermis is actually anchored to the air layer below um, what we call the basement membrane or really the kind of the top of the dermis by hemidesmosomes. And so you've got desmosomes that link all the skin cells together up top and you have the hemidesmosomes that link the whole epidermis to the area underneath. So in pemphigus, what's happening is that your antibodies are actually targeting antigens in the desmosome. So it's targeting the antigens that are holding your skin cells together. Whereas in pemphigoid, your antibodies are targeting the hemidesmosome or the proteins that are holding the epidermis to the dermis. And that accounts for the clinical difference. The other way that I describe this to my patients is that you should imagine your skin is kind of like a brick wall. All your bricks, all these, in the brick wall, all these bricks are being layered one on top of the other, but they're held together by that mortar, by that glue that holds these bricks together. So you can imagine that if you dissolve the glue with those antibodies, all those bricks fall apart. You push that brick wall and it falls apart, or it, in this human skin, blisters. So an easy way to remember this, especially if you're in med school or maybe in residency, is that pemphigus ends with S, and so that means that it is superficial. It is happening higher up in the skin. And pemphigoid ends with D, so it's deeper. It's happening deeper in the skin underneath the epidermis. So clinically, what does that look like? In pemphigus, because the blister is created from this superficial dissolving of antigens and the skin cells are falling apart from each other, your blister is going to look flaccid. What that means is that the blister just kind of droops after it forms and often it breaks open. Um, and you would have what's called a positive Nikolsky sign. What that means is that if you rub right next to the blister, you can often create a similar blister right next to it. In pemphigoid, because it's deeper, it's in between the layer of the epidermis and the dermis, it's going to have a little bit more substance to that top layer. So when that blister forms, it's gonna stand tall and proud, and it's not flaccid, instead it's tense. So it just stands there, and then it has a negative Nikolsky. So if you actually push next to the blister, you cannot recreate a blister. That's the easiest way to kind of tell the difference between pemphigus and pemphigoid. However, one big caveat, any blister that just kind of hangs out long enough will actually eventually turn flaccid. So that means that after two or three days, a tense blister will start to droop. And so if you're evaluating a patient for the first time, you have to make sure you're looking at a fresh lesion. So the other test you could send is to do some pathology. So you would actually do a biopsy and you would see differences between pemphigus and pemphigoid based on the normal biopsy specimen or what would normally be seen under the microscope. But there's a more specific test called the direct aminofluorescence. And there, what you're looking for to keep it simple is to look for what lights up. You're gonna use fluorescent antibodies to tag the current antibodies that are already on the sample so you can figure out where all those antibodies are. Are they in between the keratinocytes, in between the skin cells, in which case you're probably dealing with a pemphigus? Or are they gonna be at the basement membrane zone between the epidermis and the dermis, which you're going to see more likely in pemphigoid? You can go down that rabbit hole a little bit more and talk about the different types of pemphigoid and different types of pemphigus. There's a ton, but just to keep it simple, the DIF or the direct aminofluorescence can help you differentiate based on what lights up. And now as time goes on, we've developed more and more blood tests that can be sent. Now we can actually send tests that are ELISAs, 
um, that can actually measure how much antibody or the presence of antibody in a patient's blood. So we can actually test for an antibody that is found in pemphigus. Those would be antibodies targeting desmoglein 1 or desmoglein 3. Those are the specific names of those proteins in the desmosome. Or we can test for things like bolus pemphigoid antibodies that can be seen in pemphigoid. And certainly there are other antibodies that we're not even talking about. So that's kind of the down and dirty of how to tell the difference between pemphigus and pemphigoid. To review, pemphigus is S for superficial. So that means that they're gonna be flaccid blisters. They're gonna have positive Nikolsky. And pemphigoid ends with D for deep. So those will have tense blisters with a negative Nikolsky. I hope that's helpful, and hopefully I'll be back soon with another video to try to help demystify skin disease. Thanks, everyone.